Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I had a subscriber ask a question which I'm going to flip in here. And uh, it's pretty much a bodybuilding question because I've done a couple of videos recently kind of breaking down even studies and research uh, showing that training once moderate to high doses of anabolics come into the mix, training itself actually contributes very, very little uh, to muscle size gains. If the drugs themselves are basically the vast majority if not virtually all of the muscle that a lot of these guys are gaining. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. Now, one of the things people are always going to ask, as I've been doing a lot of these videos lately, hey Jason, why do you talk about bodybuilding uh, quite a bit? If you're not a bodybuilder, you're not a fan of bodybuilding, you think bodybuilding has no place in fitness, and guys, remember, I define bodybuilding as a competitive endeavor. Someone who works out, who doesn't compete in anything, you're not a bodybuilder, you're not a powerlifter, you're a guy who likes to work out. Um, you like live a fitness lifestyle. It might be an important part of your life, but when I say bodybuilders, I'm talking about the guys who get on stage in their panties oiled up and flex. If you're not one of those guys, I'm not talking about you. Now, uh, he basically says, then how do they bring up, how are these guys bringing up weak body parts then? If the training doesn't matter... Uh, how are they bringing up these lagging body parts? Well, I want people to think on this for a bit because the data we've got shows that training a muscle on gear doesn't do that much. It doesn't add very much more than the gear itself adds. It adds a little bit, potentially, but how much is, is really debated. The research is really conflicting on that, like conflicting in, in, as to whether it's even a statistically relevant amount of extra muscle gain. Now, I think that it is. Don't get me wrong, I do honestly believe, in spite of what some of the data might suggest back and forth, I do believe that training when on gear actually does produce more muscle gains than sitting on your ass on gear. Uh, I don't want anyone to think I don't believe that, I just don't think that it's a lot more. Meaning, I don't think that um, most pro bodybuilders wouldn't be monstrously big from the doses they take even if they chose not to work out, even if they were sedentary, they would still be monstrous. Um, they just wouldn't be quite as big as they are. So that being said, the guy says, well, you know, how are they bringing up the body parts? Well, I want you guys to think about it. A lot of you guys, if you follow bodybuilding at all, meaning if you're asking me questions about bodybuilding, then clearly you follow bodybuilding. Clearly you follow the behind the scenes stuff too, not Flex Magazine stuff. Meaning I'm sure you listen to the uncanny interviews of people. You listen to guys who talk about the drugs, who talk about everything else also. There's no way you're a fan of bodybuilding if you don't follow all the dark side of it also. All right, look around. How do you think they bring up lagging body parts? If we know from the research that training doesn't add that much, how is a guy able to come in from one year to the next, competing in bodybuilding, he's already monstrously big and add an inch or two to a muscle that's lagging? I want you to think about that for a minute. And I'm gonna ask you another question. If weak point training actually helped a lot, if it actually helped a lot, are noticeably for these guys, why is there so much side enhancement out there? Meaning when you start talking to people, hell, I've even had conversations with Loveliner where he was talking about um, some of the best coaches are artists with synthol, that they're so good with the synthol that when they inject their guys personally with it, you can't tell that it's synthol. Like they get everything so perfect and so even on each side and so balanced that it's an art form to the point to where you can't even see the synthol lumps, you can't see the smoothness. Um, and I'm not going to name names. Actually, I will name names. He said George Farrell was one of those guys. I might as well just call it. Mark's not done me any favors. I don't need to keep any of his secrets. So, uh, yeah, he said George Farrell is one of those guys. He said that George Farrell is an absolute artist and that he admired his work with Synthol, with the guys that he works with, that the man is a true artist. And for those who don't understand, synthol is an oil you inject into a muscle to create lumps of scar tissue in there that stay for years and years at a time to bring up a lagging muscle. All right, you have enormous amounts of synthol use. When you start talking to guys, synthol isn't the exception, it's the norm. Virtually every guy up there in the Mr. Olympia lineup has synthol in at least one muscle, if not three or four. Uh, implants are a big deal. It was always said that when Arnold supposedly brought up his calves, way back in the day uh, that he had gotten calf implants because muscles don't grow that fast from training. That he had, uh, there were, it had been speculated and even uh, people who knew him had said, look, uh, he got calf implants. 
All right, we see guys with implants. We've got Rich Piano. Looks like he's got pec implants. Pec implants exist. Bicep implants exist. Guys do PMMA injections as a form of side enhancement. The stuff that women inject in their butt cheeks down in South America and everywhere else to give them bigger butts. Brazilian chicks love to do this. Guys do this in their weak points and their muscles all around it. It's permanent. They add permanent collagen around a muscle to enlarge an area. But with the enormous amount of popularity of synthol and even Muscular Development Magazine's written tons of articles about directly injecting your steroids into the lagging muscles that you have to stretch them and swell them and create a synthol-like effect. To Boston Loy talking about synthol, him even demonstrating injecting it on his channel, to him selling the product. If weak point training actually worked, why is sight enhancement and implants so insanely widespread and rampant in the bodybuilding world? All right, if the weak point training worked for these guys on tons of drugs, why do they use so much synthol? And how are they bringing up the weak points? They're bringing it up with synthol. They're bringing it up with sight enhancement. They're injecting their gear directly in the muscle. It's lagging to stretch everything out. All right. They're injecting synthol in there. They're putting PMMA all around it. They're injecting all sorts of fake muscle to bring it up. That's how they bring these things up. And in some cases, they get implants. All right, calf implants are very, very common among competitive bodybuilders. If you think I'm making that up, go to the West Coast, start looking up plastic surgeons and contact them and talk to them about calf implants and ask them if they have many competitive bodybuilders who've used their services. All right, call them up, tell them you're a bodybuilder and you're interested in getting prices and the quality of their work and do they have any uh, any photos they can show you their work and they'll have tons of photos of bodybuilders before and after their calf implants, all right? Implants, synthol, PMMA, direct injection, side injection of their gear. That's how these guys bring up weak points because the truth is the extra training doesn't make much difference on the gear. All right, everything is gonna grow so fast from the drugs that if you have a genetic weak point, uh, just training it a little more on all the drugs isn't going to let it catch up because even the other muscles that you train less, because the training contributes so little to their overall size compared to the drugs, that the drugs themselves are going to make the dominant body parts just keep growing and they're still going to outpace their weak body parts. They have to use side enhancement. So when I talk about weak point training, guys, I'm not talking about for competitive bodybuilders. It doesn't work. It's not necessary. And again, it won't work because of the drugs. Uh, the other stuff they're training less is still just going to keep growing. They're not going to balance out that way. They're not going to be able to balance themselves with training. Weak point training is generally for people who are drug free who are on modest amounts of drugs. Very small amounts, less than a gram. Those are the people who are going to benefit from weak point training. Uh, and athletes, say power lifters who uh, do equipped benching and they need more tricep, their, their extra tricep work is going to help. And that's because for a lot of those guys, it's not just about size, it's about uh, the neural component and the, the neuromuscular efficiency involved with certain things. So there is a strength component that isn't enhanced completely uh, by drugs. And so you need to understand there's a difference there. For athletes with weak point training, it's a different animal. Um, but as far as the bodybuilders out there using all these drugs, if them <laughs> actually benefiting from the weak point training, they don't. A lot of these guys say things like, oh yeah, man, I spent that whole off season working really hard on my calves and brought them up two inches or three inches. You mean to tell me that a muscle that he had this lagging while running three grams of gear with growth hormone and IGF-1, that he just trained it a little harder for a year and added more muscle to it than most people gain in their noob gains? Of course not. He either put synthol in there or he got calf implants. All right? Same thing. Their triceps came like They brought their triceps up. Yeah, you ever notice when you look at the guy who's like, my triceps came up a lot? They're smoother looking. They lose some of the striations when he's just as lean. It's because he filled them full of synthol. The guy who brought his chest up Man, he had an inches to his chest in that one whole year of specialized chest training, but here's the thing. His triceps didn't come up proportionately. Really, all the best chest exercises that are really going to put meat on your chest are going to put meat on your triceps, too, because they're called presses and dips. No, he got pec implants. 
you guys have been kind of bamboozled with this. What you need to understand is that serious competitive bodybuilding is not about the training anymore. Uh, the training really takes a backseat to everything else. It is primarily drugs and genetics that determine these guys' results. Their training and nutrition are far secondary concerns behind the drugs and their genetics. And that's just the reality of it, guys. Uh, people have been taken on this, and that's the thing. People don't... Sorry, guys, I had to burp there. I just ate. Uh, I just ate a bunch of big chicken sandwiches. But... Um, yeah, people have been so bamboozled on this that they really and truly think that the training that these guys do really matters at the end of the day. They really think that it matters, and so yeah, if these guys just did some extra hard training, that's how they brought the weak points up. No, man, those weak points would have grown faster from the drugs. Or even the data I've shown you guys, we know that drugs put muscle on even untrained muscle faster than training it does. All right, so it's not even logical to assume that they kept training everything and just trained that one muscle group a little harder and it blew up a lot. Uh, the other stuff would have grown just as fast, all right, just because of the drugs are on. So it doesn't work that way. They don't suddenly have one body part that just makes very, very noticeable gains and the other muscles don't uh, make proportionate gains just from training more when all the data suggests that the vast majority of their muscle gains comes from the drugs themselves, not the training. Again, look at the various data on drugs and muscle growth. People who sit around on their ass and use moderate amount of anabolics gain muscle over twice as fast as people who lift weights do. Well over twice as fast while doing nothing, and that's moderate amounts, not even approaching anywhere near what these guys use. So you really think that they came in and in one year trained a muscle a little harder and it got disproportionately bigger when it was lagging the whole time? It was already lagging from the drugs they're on and all the training they're doing behind their other muscles. The other muscles didn't just slow down and stop growing with all the drugs are on. So if they saw a dramatic shift in proportion in a muscle that they had already been training, remember training styles don't add huge differences oftentimes in the amount of muscle you gain. Some are just better than others. But just training it more that they suddenly gained a lot more muscle? No, it doesn't work that way, not on drugs. They put something in that muscle. They didn't gain more muscle, they put something inside that muscle to bring it up. That's how they're doing it, and they just blame it on the training. And I'm not saying they probably didn't do more training for it. Sure, they do anything. If a guy whose career and his income depends upon being big and muscular and jacked and proportionate, of course he trained it more. But he also probably pinned a bunch of stuff into that muscle right after he trained it every time. All right, He put a huge amount of either synthol, anabolics, whatever he, anything and everything, because that's what they do. They do anything and everything to bring it up. So yeah, when it was all pumped from training, he probably did go inject a bunch of stuff in it. And he probably did train it more. Unless it was an implant, and then he had to back off on the training on it. But if he did it purely by it just injecting something into there, of course he trained it more. But the training itself isn't what did it. It was the other stuff. All right, guys, I got someone at my door, so I hope this has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.